people signing in as we start. So again, just one last time, I want to just check the technology, make sure that everybody can hear me. Um, if you can hear me, can you type in yes again at the bottom right hand corner? Okay, perfect. So it looks like most people can hear me and all of you, I'm assuming, can see the slides. So that's good. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. Um, there has been a really a, a huge amount of interest. And uh, so I'm really grateful. You know, I know everybody has really busy lives and uh, I'm really grateful that you're taking some time off to listen to this valuable information. Hopefully you'll learn a lot today. Um, I have a ton of information that I'm going to be sharing with you. So um, in order to get ready, um, it's going to be an hour um, that we're going to be together. So make sure you have a drink with you. So either some water, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, whatever it is that you drink at this time of day. Make sure you have some uh, paper and a pen or pencil. Um, because I am going to be sharing a ton of information. I want to make sure that you take some notes down. Um, and also at the end, I'm going to share with you where you can get more help and more resources for those of you who are interested. Um, I also have a special surprise as a thank you for joining me in today's webinar. Hold on, somebody is not muted, so. Okay. So uh, this is our classroom. So this is more or less what you should be seeing in your screen. Now here, as you guys can see, this is where you can write down all your questions. Now, as you probably noticed, everyone can read everybody's questions. So please note that your questions are not going to be confidential. If you have more of a personal question that you'd like to ask me, please feel free to send me an email after the webinar and I will be more than happy to answer any of your more personal questions. But if there's anything that you'd like to ask that you're okay with everybody else reading your question, then please just type it in. And good morning, Nadine, nice, that you, nice of you to join us. If you can't see the slides, uh, you may want to sign off again and sign on again. I think most people can see the slides. So some people are saying that you can see my arrow, but you can't see the slide. So maybe try signing off and signing on again. Yeah, there is a slide right now, Ines. Okay. So who am I? Um, most of you uh, who are joining us today know me, um, but, for, but for those of you who don't, my name is Dr. Sandra Miranda, and I have been practicing as a naturopathic doctor for over 17 years, and I currently have my clinic in Ajax, Ontario. Um, I got into naturopathic medicine because of my own um, experiences with my own health problems. So when I was 19 years old, I was diagnosed with IBS. If, for those of you who don't know what IBS is, that's irritable bowel syndrome. So I was having a lot of digestive tract problems and um, I was feeling really tired. I had a lot of facial acne and uh, even my joints started hurting me at the time. Um, I went to the doctor, just like what everybody else would do, and the doctor told me that I was going to have to take Metamucil for the rest of my life, and he also prescribed arthritic pills, and that didn't really sit very well with me because I thought, oh my God, like I'm 19 and I'm already going to start taking arthritic pills. So um, it wasn't an option that I felt comfortable with. So uh, what I decided to do is I went to see a naturopathic doctor at the time, knowing very little of that type of medicine. And um, she put me on a detox program. And to my surprise, within the first three weeks, not only did my digestive tract problems started feeling better, but also my acne started improving. 
And my joints, you know, towards the end of the three weeks, my joints started feeling better as well. So that really got me thinking as to the connection between toxicity, our digestive tract, and the rest of our bodies and our um, other symptoms, you know, uh, other health symptoms that we have. So um, this is the reason why I'm so excited to share this information with you today, because not only do I know firsthand how much better you can feel with a detox, um, but also I've witnessed this every day in practice working with thousands of patients during 17 years. Okay, so um, we have a lot to cover today. This is our agenda for today. Oh, somebody is not muted. Let me just check. Okay, I think we've got it. Okay, so the agenda for today is um, the very first thing that we're going to talk about is who should be detoxifying. Um, not everybody is ready to start a detox program, so I want to make sure that you have a good understanding of who should be detoxifying. Um, we're going to talk about the different organs of detoxification and the different ways to detoxify each of the organ systems. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, throughout the whole presentation, I'm going to always be referring to more basic and more advanced methods uh, to follow during a detoxification program. And at the end, we're going to talk about daily routines that you can start to follow right away so that you can start feeling better right away. So during the... Um, I'm assuming most of you are joining this webinar today because um, you've probably are uh, you probably have been overindulging a little bit during the holiday season. Maybe you've been eating too many carbs or too many sweets or too much of the alcohol or just in general eating way more food than what you normally would have uh, on a regular basis. So, and this doesn't only happen during the Christmas season. This can happen during Thanksgiving. This can happen during times, you know, when we have a lot of birthdays or anniversaries. Or for a lot of people, you know, a lot of patients, they just, they're always living on the go. They're go, go, go. And they're just always overindulging and they're not being careful with what they're eating. So um, what's the end result? The end result is that we end up feeling bloated and heavy and tired. And not just that, but we can have a lot of symptoms of inflammation that start increasing. So we start feeling aches and pains um, that can be either in our joints or in our muscles. We feel a lot achier and stiff in the morning when we first get up. A lot of patients come in and they're like, I feel like a 90 year old when I first wake up, you know, just wobbling in the morning. Um, you can, the inflammation can affect your vessels, causing problems such as headaches, you know, and migraines. It can affect your respiratory tract, making you feel more mucousy, so sinuses, asthma, just ear congestion. Um, it can affect your skin, you know, causing problems such as eczema or dermatitis. And during these times when you're overindulging, um, you can feel that the rash just gets angrier and itchier. And of course, for some people, it affects our moods. So we just get moodier, we're irritable, everyone around us seems a lot more irritating than what they normally would. So now I have a question for everyone. Um, what are some of the symptoms that you're ex that you are now experiencing after the holidays? So, if you just want to share that with me by typing things in, what are some of the symptoms that you're feeling now after the holidays? Are you feeling bloated? Are you feeling achier? Anyone wants to share? tired, no energy. That's a very common one. And I want to say not having any energy is it's, it's kind of like your body talking to you that there's something off. And if you don't pay attention to that, then that's when you want to, um, you want to worry that something else is going to follow after having no energy. So other people are saying, uh, still craving sugars, you know, feeling a lot more achy in their joints. Um, some people feeling constipated, again, achy. So these are grouchy. <laughs> yeah, these are very, very common, you know, uh, symptoms of toxicity and things that can have, um, things can, that can improve, you know, during a detox. 
Yeah, and for a lot of people, it's not just during the holidays. This has been symptoms that have been ongoing, you know, even from before. Yeah, so thank you for sharing that. Um, so the very first thing that I want to cover is who should be detoxifying. In Chinese medicine, we um, have the concept of deficiency versus excess. So people who are really deficient um, need to be really careful at maybe not detoxifying so aggressively or maybe just holding off on a detox program until they start feeling better. So who is... So who has this type of deficient picture are people who are feeling really weak or feeling too thin, or who are too thin, who get sick often or who take a really long time to recover from a sickness, somebody who may be undernourished, feeling dizzy a lot when they get up quickly, you know, from a lying down position or feeling dizzy when they're trying to exercise. Um, or you exercise and it takes you three to four days to recover after you exercise. So now, please don't take me wrong. I'm not suggesting that just because somebody is thin, that that means that you don't need to detoxify. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is that you want to ask yourself, where's your energy level from zero to 10, 10 being the best? And if your answer is like, I'm at a one or at a two, then maybe you want to try making some slower changes trying to eat healthier, trying to eat more protein as a way to trying to increase your energy. And then once your energy has gotten a little bit higher, then you may be ready to do a full-blown detox. So just be careful with that. Um, so of course, the better candidates are people who um, need to lose weight, who have a lot of inflammatory symptoms. So the symptoms that we were describing before, people who are feeling bloated, gassy, um, constipation, diarrhea, or having like that inflamed skin problem. So the eczema, the dermatitis, joint pain, muscle aches, people that are retaining a lot of water, you know, when you're retaining water, like in the morning, you feel a lot flatter, your hands, you, like your rings are not too tight, you know, in the morning. And then by the end of the day, your, your rings are all tight, you're feeling more bloated, your pants are feeling tighter, your ankles are more swollen. So all those are signs of water retention. So those are the more the better candidates for doing a detoxification. Okay, so again, throughout this whole, uh, as I'm giving you the tips of things that you can do, I'm going to be referring to the beginner detoxifiers versus the more advanced detoxifiers. So um, the beginner detoxifiers would be somebody who maybe has never done a detox before, or maybe who is really, really unhealthy, having a really unhealthy diet and lifestyle. And in this case, you may not want to do something too drastic because our body doesn't do well with drastic changes. So for example, you know, I've had patients who come in to see me who are drinking like six, seven cups of coffee a day. So for someone like that, a better tip would be maybe to decrease the amount of coffee as opposed to just eliminating the coffee altogether, because then you can go through a really bad caffeine withdrawal and not feel very good. So please try to, you know, understand your body. Where do you think you're at? Um, and to see if you're, if you think you're more of a beginner detoxifier. Um, the more advanced uh, tips would be suitable for somebody who has done detoxification programs in the past, or maybe who are, maybe you're used to eating healthy, you know, you're used to eating the healthy foods, but maybe you've just gotten off track lately and you just need to get back on track. Um, the other people that would be um, that the advanced tips would be suitable for are maybe people who just have already been diagnosed with some inflammatory condition or some autoimmune problem or some degenerative problem, and you just need to start making some changes quicker. So you can try to do, and there's nothing wrong with doing some of the more beginner tips and then just trying some of the more advanced tips, depending on what you think is best for you. Um, okay, so what are the main organs of detoxification? We have the skin, we have the liver, we have the intestines, the kidneys, and the lungs. Now, the skin is very much related to our lymphatic system. So we're going to be talking about all these organs and how you can detoxify. What are the symptoms that you need to detoxify each one of these organs? And we're going to talk about some tips as to what you can do to help each one of these organs. So the liver, 
The liver, you probably know this, it's considered one of the most important organs of detoxifications. So toxins are gonna come into our body either through our water, through our food, we're gonna maybe have chemicals in our environment that we're gonna be inhaling. So all of these toxins, they come in, they either stay in our gut or they get absorbed into our bloodstream, they go through the liver and the liver's job, together with the gallbladder, is to try to neutralize these toxins so we can eliminate them, okay? The liver is also a very important fat burning machine. So if your liver is congested or sluggish because of too many toxins in your system, you're gonna have a harder time losing weight and burning fat. So please keep this in mind. Um, when our body has a high burden of toxins and the liver works inefficiently, making weight loss harder, and not only that, but also increasing inflammation in different parts of our body. The job of our liver becomes even more difficult if our digestive tract is not working well, okay? So they both work very much in connection with each other. So what are some of the symptoms of a sluggish liver? Again, you know, we can have those symptoms of inflammation that we've been talking about, but we can also have a lot of the hormonal imbalances. So if you have either currently experiencing or you have in the past been diagnosed with problems such as PMS or heavy periods or fibroids or endometriosis, cysts, polyps, um, not only that, but it can also be uh, memory problems or feeling really tired or depression, bloating, all of these can be signs of your liver being sluggish and not working as efficiently as what they should. Some patients even have a soreness because the liver is located in the right upper quadrant of your abdomen. And some people, you know, if you kind of like just palpate in that area, uh, you may be able to see that uh, that area is sore, you know, when you palpate it right under your rib cage on the right upper quadrant. So if that's the case, that can be a sign of liver congestion. Also, I get a lot of patients who come in and the whites of their eyes have turned a little bit yellowy. So that can be another sign of uh, your liver needing a detox. Okay, so just overall, you need to know that the health of our liver will affect our entire health. So please make a note of these. These are the main foods that are gonna help to clean your liver. So what you wanna try to do is you wanna try to find recipes that include you know, a combination of most of these foods. So for example, you know, making a salad that has beets and carrots, and instead of adding um, like a craft dressing, which will have sugar added to it, maybe just adding some lemon or lime and some olive oil. Or the grapefruit, for example. You know, if you can eat grapefruit, some people with certain medications, you're asked to avoid grapefruit. But if you can eat grapefruits, those are excellent ways, uh, excellent foods to help cleanse the liver. So have it as a snack. You know, mid-afternoon, that tends to be a time when people crave, you know, sweets. Try to have a grapefruit at that time or right before bedtime. So consider, you know, doing those um, type of thing. Or you can do like a stir fry with the broccoli and the cauliflower. The green leafy salads are great, you know, for cleansing the liver. Anything that's bitter is going to be really good for the liver. Okay. The green tea. I don't know if you noticed the green tea is right there. So if you're the type to drink a lot of coffee, then maybe slowly you want to try to decrease the coffee and switch more to the green tea. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I don't like green tea because it's, a, it's so bitter. Um, there are a lot of different combinations of green tea that you can try. There's green tea with honey. There's green tea with jasmine, which is my favorite. Um, so you don't have to go for like a straight green tea. You can get one of the combination herbal teas and uh, they taste really nice and they still give you a little bit of caffeine if you need that picker upper but it gives you a high amount of antioxidants that can be really healthy for your liver 
Um, there's also supplements. Um, so if you're more of a beginner detoxifier, I would just focus more on the foods, you know, that can help cleanse your liver. But if you're more of an advanced detoxifier, then you can try getting um, one, uh, some of the supplements that can also help the liver. Uh, if you go to a health food store, there's a lot of products that have a combination of these herbs. Now, one thing to be aware of, again, a lot of these herbs are going to be bitters. And if you have an unhealthy gallbladder, so if you've been diagnosed with small stones or if you've been told that you have sludge, if you don't know what sludge is, that's a good thing because that probably means that your gallbladder is okay. But if you do, if you are questioning the health of your gallbladder or of the ducts, then you want to try to be careful with adding too many of the bitters all at once because it can be a bit uncomfortable, you know, for you. Um, turmeric, I want to draw your attention to turmeric or curcumin. This supplement is an excellent anti-inflammatory. You don't need to take it as a supplement. You can take it as, um, just have it as a spice, you know, and make it part of your diet and part of your cooking. Um, there's been lots of studies that compare, you know, the anti-inflammatory effects of curcumin as opposed to cortisone. So that's just how great of an anti-inflammatory it is. Um, so if you're trying to, um, you know, decrease a lot of inflammatory symptoms, then maybe curcumin is something that you can think of. Okay. So um, the next part is our digestive tract. So uh, our digestive tract, we have the upper digestive tract, which is our stomach, and we have the lower digestive tract, which is our, um, uh, which is our intestines. Um, sorry, we have a question here. Is tea enough, uh, turmeric tea versus a supplement? So I guess, Ines, that's going to depend on your symptoms. Um, you can start with just a tea, you know, if you'd like. There are a lot of uh, different recipes. Uh, there's one called the golden milk tea um, that includes turmeric as well. Um, but if you have a lot of um, inflammatory conditions, you may um, find that taking a supplement is more concentrated and it's giving you more of the turmeric. Okay. Um, okay, so getting back to our digestive tract, our digestion uh, starts in our mouth. Um, so we need to make sure we're chewing our foods properly. We tend to just chew maybe a couple of times and uh, we swallow right away. So ideally, we want to be chewing a good five to 10 times for softer foods and up to 30 times for more dense foods such as meats and vegetables. Okay. Um, then our stomach has enzymes, hydrochloric acid, which is what we need to digest. And with an unhealthy diet, what can happen is that the amounts of enzymes that are available to us to digest our foods can decrease. And this can lead to a situation in which we're not digesting our foods properly, and that can lead to problems and to more gut toxicity. So again, the symptoms include feeling tired, bloated, gassy, heartburn, reflux, stomach cramps, changing your bowel habits, so constipation to diarrhea. These are all signs that you need to detoxify your gut. Um, and of course, you know, the problem with toxins sitting in your gut is that there is the uh, possibility of things being absorbed into your bloodstream and uh, then just affecting other organs, you know, and, and other tissues. <clears throat> The other problem that can happen with our digestive tract is the flora. So inside our gut, we have a lot of different organisms. We kind of have the good guys and we have the bad guys. So the good guys is what we call the probiotics or the acidophilus. I'm assuming a lot of you has, have heard of that. And then the bad stuff is what we call yeast. And we all have some yeast. We all have some parasites. We all have some bad bacteria. So having them is not the problem. The problem is when they start overgrowing. And when they start overgrowing, we have symptoms. We can get symptoms such as the ones from the slide. So we can feel tired. We can have mouth ulcers. We can start developing allergies. So itchy, burning eyes, hay fever type of symptoms, itchy skin rashes. We can get the yeast infections, the bladder infections, a white coat in your tongue, change in bowel habits. So if you feel like you have a lot of these symptoms, then maybe you want to think about balancing that flora in your digestive tract. Okay, so how would we fix this? If you think this is your problem, then the main thing that you can do is um, take a probiotic. 
So many of you may already be taking a probiotic, but if you're not, then you may want to consider taking one. And I usually recommend getting the ones that are dairy free. Dairy can be a really common food sensitivity. So you want to get a probiotic that's dairy free because otherwise it defeats the purpose. Um, and you want to make sure that you get a probiotic that gives you at least, I'm going to say at least a good 30 billion bacteria per capsule. I have some of my patients who are doing a detox that can take up to 60 billion. But if you're just starting out with probiotics, please know that when you first start taking it, you can actually feel a bit of gassiness and a bit of bloating. Usually, if you stick with it after the first couple of days, it does get better. Okay, so don't give up on it just because at the first try you do get a little bit of loose stools. Uh, your body will get used to it. You can decrease the amount that you're taking, but definitely be careful at not picking up one that's just 2 billion bacteria because that won't be enough. Uh, fiber is really important too. And anyone who knows me knows that my favorite type of fiber to recommend is ground flax seeds or chia seeds. The studies with ground flax seeds and chia seeds is with two heaping tablespoons. So if a lot of people say to me, it's like, oh, I'm already taking that. I'm like, well, how much do you take it? Oh, I just sprinkle some in my baking. That's not enough. So you do want to make sure that you're having two heaping tablespoons of the ground flax seeds or the chia seeds. And you want to keep your seeds in the fridge to keep your seeds really fresh because they do go rancid very quickly. Okay. As soon as you increase fiber, you want to increase water. So you want to be careful with that as well. Um, now, for some of the more advanced detoxifiers, now if you're the beginner detoxifier, you can start with the probiotics, you can start with the fiber. Those are really easy things to incorporate. If you're one of the more, uh, the more advanced detoxifiers and if you feel that the dysbiosis, that imbalance in the gut floor is one of your problems, then um, definitely think about adding some antifungals, some antiparasitics. Uh, so examples of my favorite antifungals would include oregano oil, olive leaf, caprylic acid, some grapefruit seed extract, or for antiparasitics, we have black walnut, wormwood. So all of these are great. Again, if you go to the health food store, you may be able to find products that have a combination of all of these um, antifungals. Okay, so I just noticed my numbers of attendees and I just realized that there's a lot more people who just signed on. So just to remind everyone, at the end, I am going to be sharing with you where you can get more help and resources. And for those of you, for those of you who are interested, and also I have a special surprise as a thank you for joining me in today's webinar. So I just wanted to uh, make sure you guys know that. So the next organ that we're going to talk about is the kidneys. The kidneys um, is the organ that helps to remove waste products through the urine. So as many of you know, the kidneys are in charge of regulating uh, our blood pressure. They're also the organs that help us keep alkaline, okay? So um, the amount of urine is gonna vary from person to person. You can have as little as one cup of urine per day. This would of course be in somebody who's a lot more toxic or somebody who's a lot more dehydrated or the urine, your urine volume can be as much as 24 cups, you know, per day. And of course, this would be from somebody who's a lot more hydrated. The best thing that you can do to help your kidneys is drinking water. Okay, so this is really important. I can't emphasize this more. I've seen many patients who don't have the healthiest diets, who don't have the healthiest lifestyles, but if they still drink their water, it's just amazing as to how much health they can still maintain, even though all their other habits, you know, are not the best. Our bodies are made out of 70% water. Life and health depend absolutely on water. So again, I can't emphasize this more. Um, water is gonna help moisten the lungs. It's gonna help to flush out toxins. It's going to help to lubricate your joints and organs. It's going to help you with proper digestion. And it helps to build muscle, which is eventually going to help your metabolism. So if you're the type to have a hard time losing weight, I get a lot of patients who come in, you know, and who say to me, no matter what I try, I just can't lose weight anymore. It used to be so easy for me and now I can't. Try to drink more water. It makes a huge difference. 
Um, there's just no way of detoxifying without a good amount of water. So again, if you're one of my beginner detoxifiers, you want to aim for as close to two liters as possible. You want to start your day with two glasses of water right away. Um, and uh, then every hour you want to drink an extra or every two hours at least you want to drink an extra glass of water um, if you're one of my more advanced detoxifiers then aim for the three liters technically that's how much you want to be drinking in order to speed up your metabolism and in order to really have an impact on that um, you can try to increase it slowly. And I know what you're thinking is like, oh my God, so much water. I'm going to be running to the toilet. Yes, you will be for the first couple of days. And trust me, it does get better. Your bladder does get used to it. And then you won't have to be rushing to the toilet so much because your body will be used to drinking more water. Now, when I say water, I'm not just talking water alone. You can add lemon to it. You can add ginger to it. Um, herbal teas, as long as you're not adding sugar to it, will be considered part of your water intake. So it doesn't have to be just water alone. But please don't add any crystallite. Please don't consider pop or coffee or juice as part of your water that would not be considered part of your water you'd be surprised how many people think it is okay so um this is a recipe that you can follow to also flush your kidneys so who would benefit from doing this um it would be people who are retaining a lot of water so if you feel that in the morning you feel a lot flatter but by the evening you can gain a good three four pounds um, that's not fat that you're putting on <laughs> during, though, during the day. That's water retention. So, you know, if you feel like you are retaining a lot of water, then try doing um, a kidney flush during your detox program at least once a week. For those of you who are having your periods and who tend to retain a lot of water, get the breast tenderness, you know, before your period, then there's nothing wrong with doing a kidney flush right before your period during that time of the PMS. Okay. Now the lungs. The lungs is unfortunately an organ that gets forgotten. You know, we kind of forget about it, but it's through our exhalation, we are um, expelling uh, carbon dioxide, which is a very acidic gas. So this is um, really important to keep in mind when we're trying to do a detox. Um, deep breathing exercises. If you are, I don't know if you have done this already, if you're in a if you're in a habit of doing this or not. If you're one of the beginner detoxifiers, you wanna try doing this at least just once a day. Um, it doesn't only help with your lung detoxification, but it also helps with uh, cortisol, which is your stress hormone. So if you feel like you have a lot of stress during the day and you're go, 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 then trying to do some deep breathing exercises can really help with that as well. Uh, if you're one of the more advanced detoxifiers, you can do this easy a good five times a day and you don't need to be lying down and setting aside five, 10 minutes to do it. You can do it while you're driving and you get into a red light you know, and you just have like 30 seconds, do a few deep breathing exercises. So please don't forget about your lungs, really important. The last organ that I wanna mention is your lymphatic system, you know, which is related to your skin. Um, our lymphatic system is literally like the body sewage system, if you wanna put it that way. It is all over our body. Most of the lymphatic vessels are located right under our skin and in between our muscles. Its role is to collect the toxic debris and it dumps it into our bloodstream so that we can then filter it out through our kidneys or then it goes back into our gut so we can eliminate it. So the best thing that you can do for your lymphatic system is do a dry skin brushing technique. So you want to get a brush like this one. You can find that, you can easily find that in um, a health food store. And you wanna brush your skin. You wanna try getting into a habit of doing this right before your shower. You wanna brush your skin in a circular motion, okay? From the feet up, to the groin area. Here in the groin area, this is where we have a lot of lymph nodes. You wanna do it from your hand up to the underarm area. We have a lot of lymph nodes here in this area as well. And we also have lymph nodes in our neck. So we wanna go up from the chest up to our neck. 
I usually recommend to avoid the face and the inner thigh areas because they're areas that are a lot more sensitive. But taking, it doesn't have to be, again, 10 minutes of, um, of dry skin brushing. It can be just one or two minutes before you get into the shower, you know, um, doing that. And once you get into the shower, you want to try doing some contrast showers. So when you're showering, you want to follow the sequence. One to three minutes of hot water and then followed by 30 seconds of cold. If 30 seconds seems too overwhelming for you, then try at the very least 10 seconds of cold, okay? But you do wanna to try to experience that contrast in temperatures, um, and you wanna try doing that at least three times. And while you're doing that, right at the sternum, right here, we have a gland called the thymus gland. So that you wanna stimulate that by that just tapping on the sternum, and that's going to help um, your lymphatic system to detoxify. So again, something really easy that you can incorporate, you know, every day in your shower. And uh, that's going to, it's going to be amazing. You're going to feel an increased sense of energy. Your blood circulation, your lymphatic circulation is also going to be stimulated. Okay, so do you have any questions for me so far? So will this recorded webinar be available later on? Yes, it will be, Darcy. So I will make it available for the next few days. Um, do you have any other questions for me right now? Carrots and beets for pre-diabetic. Yes, carrots and beets are okay. They're considered low glycemic index foods as long as you're not overdoing it with the amount. So for the carrots and for the beets, about half a cup uh, would be considered a serving size. So it's completely fine to have some carrots and beets, but you do want to watch the amounts. Um, if you're pre-diabetic, maybe I'm assuming this was a question when we were going through the liver foods, you can just mix it with a lot of the green leafy vegetables. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about the glycemic index, you know, if you have um, a problem with your blood sugar levels. Okay, so let's move right along. Um, so now we're going to get into the main foods that you want to try to avoid during your detox program. Um, sugar is the main thing. Um, if you think about all the different types of diets, you know, that are out there, we have the paleo diet, we have the ketogenic diet, we have the South Beach diet, we have the Atkins diet, there's all these diets and patients usually come to my office and they're all confused, like, I don't know what to follow. I've been trying to follow this, I've been trying to follow that. If you think about what is the one common thing from all these diets is that they all eliminate sugar and sweets and processed foods. There's not one of these diets that are going to say to you, it's okay to have sugar and sweets and processed foods. So if there's one thing that you can do, and I've had patients that do this, they come in and they feel overwhelmed, you know, with the number of things that they have to change. And then I tell them, just go home and eliminate the sugar. And just by doing that alone, it can make a huge difference. So how are you going to know that something has sugar added to it? I don't want you looking at the nutritional facts. That can be a bit, a bit um, confusing. Anything that has a carb is gonna show that it has a, a, some sugar added to it. What I want you to do is to read ingredients. So for example, here the ingredients is uh, organic coconut milk, water, gourd gum. There's no sugar added, even though here it says sugar one gram, okay? So what you wanna check when you're having some, ideally you just wanna be eating more whole foods. The way you find things in nature, that's the way you wanna eat them in their natural state. But if you are gonna eat something from a package, then you wanna check ingredients, not the nutritional facts, to see if you find any sugar in there or any word ending in O's, okay? So that's an important tip that I like to share with people. What are healthier alternatives to sugar? It would be, of course, the honey, agave, pure maple syrup, stevia. Stevia is probably the best one, you know, from this group. If you're one of the beginner detoxifiers, you can still have some of the honey, agave, pure maple syrup, but you do want to try to limit it to maybe one teaspoon a day. If you're one more of the, if you're uh, the advanced detoxifiers, then um, during the detox program, ideally, you just want to eliminate them because in all honesty, the more you have of the honey, the agave, and the pure maple syrup, the more you're going to continue craving some of the sugars, okay? So just please be aware of that. 
the other one is coffee. I know we live in a society that we're huge, you know, coffee drinkers. Um, if you're one of the beginner detoxifiers and you are having a lot of coffee, then maybe you just want to think about decreasing it slowly during the detox program. But if you're only having one cup of day and you really want to do a good focused detox, then try to eliminate them, eliminate it because caffeine does affect every single organ in our body. And it's not just the caffeine, but a regular cup of coffee will have a good 300 and some toxins you know, in it. So it is unfortunately a very, very toxic drink. And if you were just having coffee once in a while, it wouldn't be a big deal. But most people in our society, they drink coffee on a regular basis. So that is what's most likely going to affect our health. So this is why I wanted to make sure I included this as part of the presentation. So what are the coffee substitutes? Of course, we talked about green tea. You know that green tea is great for the liver. You know green tea has a lot of antioxidants. You know you can get green tea mixed with other things like jasmine to try to get rid of the bitterness of the green tea. Green tea still has some caffeine in it. So if you're looking for that picker upper, green tea can do the trick. The other option is Swiss water decaf. Now, I don't know if any of you have heard of this, but regular decaf is not a good alternative to coffee because in the process of removing the caffeine, usually um, they're adding chemicals to do so. So it ends up being not a very good drink for us anyways. But this company has found a method of removing the caffeine, most of it, not all of it, through a steaming process. OK, so if you go to the health food store, if you go to the health food section at the superstore at your closest grocery store, go to the organic section where you're going to find organic coffee. You should be able to find the Swiss water decafs in that section. Trust me, it tastes just like coffee. It doesn't get rid of the caffeine completely, so it can still give you that boost. And you are getting rid of all the other toxins, you know, that a regular cup of coffee will have. So please consider doing that. Alcohol. Alcohol, again, for some of you, this may not be a big deal. If you're just one of those drinkers, you know, that you just drink during the holidays or once a month, you know, in a social event, then again, this is not a big deal for you. But this is more geared for people who are drinking almost daily or many times during the week, either the beer or the wine. These can really have an effect you know, on our liver's ability to detoxify. So what's a better alternative is kombucha tea. I don't know if any one of you has tried kombucha tea. The one, the picture that I'm showing is called Kathy's kombucha. That's my favorite type of kombucha. Um, but any kombucha tea uh, will be fine. Um, kombucha tea is becoming a more popular alternative to wine and beer. It is a Chinese fermented beverage that is a good, it has a good amount of probiotics in it. So if anything, it can be very therapeutic and can help cleanse the digest, your digestive tract. And um, it doesn't have the alcohol like the wine and beer does, but it can still create that sense of calmness, you know, and it can help you to wind down after a stressful day, just like the alcohol would. So if you haven't tried it, please try it. It's a great alternative. Yes, um, the question is, can you drink kombucha tea during a candida detox? And the answer is yes. Um, you should be able to drink that. However, some people who have a lot of candida overgrowth may uh, need to introduce fermented foods very slowly because some people just can't tolerate the fermented foods very well. So if you've never had a lot of fermented foods, please introduce the kombucha slowly. Um, but ideally, it is a drink that you can add to a candida protocol for sure. Yes, I don't know. I haven't done my own kombucha tea, but if you know how to do it, absolutely, you can make your own Melina. And if you have a great recipe to share with us, we'd love to hear about it. Um, I haven't done that on my own. I know a lot of people do do that. Um, but if you don't have the time to do that, then you can just go to your local health food store and be able to find a few uh, choices. Okay, the next thing um, is our carbs. A lot of people, uh, they eat way too many carbs and breads and muffins. So if this is what you think part of your problem is, then during a detox, you wanna try to decrease that or try to eat more healthier carbs. Um, so having more of the gluten-free options, you can get a lot of products that say gluten-free 
or I want to talk to you about quinoa, which is a gluten-free grain that's really has a good amount of protein, wild rice or brown rice, again, great sources of carbs. Um, Ezekiel bread, which is a sprouted bread. It still has the wheat, but it's sprouted and anything that's sprouted is going to be easier to digest and it's not going to cause the same amount of bloating and heaviness and problems with your digestive tract as the regular breads are. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, how much vitamin D should you take in a day? The amount of vitamin D that you should have uh, really depends on your blood work. Um, when you get a blood test done with your medical doctor, according to conventional medicine, they consider normal a number over 76. Um, we like to see it, and the, and the more recent studies show that you get the best um, anti-inflammatory uh, protection or cancer uh, prevention risk protection with the from the vitamin D when your levels are over 120. So how much vitamin D you should be taking really depends. It can be a thousand. I've had some patients that take 4,000. I've had patients who take 10,000. So the amount really depends on what your blood test is showing. Okay. Okay. So, um, I want to share with you daily routines that you can start following right away. So the very first thing that I usually ask all my patients, and it makes a huge difference, is start your day with water and lemon. Start your day with two glasses of water. And if you can add uh, the juice of half a lemon or lime, then that would be really, really good. Um, and like I said before, you know, if you're the type not to drink a lot of water, um, then make yourself put a little alarm in your phone or create a buddy system with a coworker or with a friend so you can remind each other every two hours you want to drink an extra glass of water. Okay, so that's one of the first daily routines that I want to make sure that after today's talk that you start doing right away. The other really good routine that I find is very helpful is um, introducing some wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is excellent for the liver, has a lot of antioxidants, and it's probably one of the best detoxifiers that we can have. You don't need to get this specific brand. This is just an example of the one that I take, but you have many, many different brands that you can find in the health food store. Now, one little warning is you want to start slowly. This brand, for example, recommends three teaspoons per day. Um, I would recommend, especially if you're one of the beginner detoxifiers, just start with one teaspoon. If you introduce too much wheatgrass all at once, um, then it, it can make you feel nauseous. So just be careful with that. Um, so the other thing that you can add to your wheatgrass shot is some ashwagandha. I don't know if any one of you has heard of ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is great for people who are always on the go and who feel very stressed out and who feel they're having a hard time detoxifying due to stress. So ashwagandha is an adaptogen. So again, if you think this is sounds just like what you're going through, then you're gonna to start today with two glasses of water and lemon, and then you're gonna have a shot of one teaspoon of wheatgrass, one teaspoon of ashwagandha, gonna mix it in some water and you're going to drink that right in the morning, okay? So here are the main points so far that I want to make sure you um, you make a note of. So right on waking, you're going to start your day with two glasses of water and half a lemon or lime juice. Then you're going to consider having a shot of wheatgrass. Again, don't start with the full dose. Just start slowly of wheatgrass and or ashwagandha if you feel like you can benefit from the ashwagandha. Um, during the rest of the day, you want to try to avoiding the main toxic foods that we have talked about. You want to try to make sure that you're drinking, you know, your six more glasses of water at a minimum during the rest of the day. Uh, you want to have a detox salad, you know, with a lot of the uh, dark green leafy vegetables, with the beets, you know, with the carrots, uh, with lemon and lime juice, and all the other wonderful foods that we talked about. Um, you want to try doing the skin dry brushing before showering and then during your shower you want to try the contrast shower sequence. If you can't handle the 30 seconds of cold water, do at least the 10 seconds, whatever you can handle. The deep breathing exercises, don't forget about that. Okay, 
So at the beginning of the webinar, I told you that I would share with you where you can get more help and resources for those of you who are interested. And I also told you that I have a special surprise as a thank you um, for joining me in today's webinar. So pretty much where to go from here. So you have different options. Your first option is absolutely do nothing. So take all this information, take all your notes, put it away, get back onto your busy life and just absolutely do nothing. I call this living in the someday aisle. Someday I will change. Someday I will lose the weight. Someday I will try to be healthier. If you choose this, chances are nothing's going to change with your health condition. You're not going to be losing the weight. And even worse, you know, as time goes on, you know, your symptoms may get even worse. Um, or hopefully not, but you may even end up with some scary degenerative or inflammatory condition or autoimmune problem. So hopefully this is not the option that you choose to do. The second option is you can try doing it on your own. You know, you may find that you have the self-discipline to do this on your own. You may find that you have enough knowledge to try to do a detox on your own, that it's not such a big challenge because already you're eating, you know, fairly healthy and that you feel like you can stick with it, then good for you. Please go ahead and do it. The other option is maybe you can choose to go and see your local naturopathic doctor. If you're one of my patients, you can make an appointment and I can guide you through a detox. Or the other option that we have put together for you is a four week online detox course that you can be a part of from the comfort out of your own home where I will be guiding you every step of the way in a group setting. So, this opportunity will help you to detoxify all your sins from the holiday season and help you feel lighter again. And the idea is that you're going to start feeling more energized. Um, and we're going to be detoxifying in a way that we're going to decrease the inflammation, losing the weight and balancing your hormones. So you're going to feel less aches and pains. You're going to feel less um, inflamed. So if you have a skin problem, that's going to get better, less bloated, less stuffy a better clarity of mind, and just in general, feeling more enthusiastic of starting your year on the right track. Um, this course, the way I've designed it is specifically, we're going to be to get working together for 21 days, and that's exactly the number of days that we need to establish healthier habits. So um, I'll be with you uh, and guiding you step by step. Um, the idea is that we're going to be doing this as a group. So you can obviously do this on your own anonymously if that's what you wish to do, but there's a huge benefit from sharing experiences and sharing our struggles and learning from each other's questions uh, because a deep body cleanse can bring to the surface a lot of different emotions and a lot of diff uh, different physical symptoms. And I'll be doing the detox with you, so I will be you know, sharing my experiences with you as well. So we would be starting this um, on... Um, next Wednesday. So that's the idea. We'll be starting it on Wednesday, January the 10th, uh, online at 11 o'clock in the morning again. Um, this I'm just going to take you through a run through as to what we're going to be covering each week. So the first week, we start the program right away, we're going to go through the list of foods, you know, the do's and the don'ts, uh, discuss what the program should look like for you, uh, whether you're a beginner or a more advanced detoxifier. Uh, what the healthier alternatives are. I find a lot of people who try to do detoxifications on their own, they know they need to eliminate a whole bunch of things, but they don't know what are the healthier alternatives. So they end up just starving themselves. And that's not the right way of approaching a detox. If you want to lose the weight, you want to eat. We only burn when we eat. So the idea is not to stop eating. The idea is to eat the right foods and at the right time. So we're going to talk about that. Um, discuss. We're going to be discussing the dirty dozen uh, versus the clean 15 food concepts. Um, what is a healing crisis and how to deal with it? Uh, what to do when the cravings hit? And in general, all the tips that you need to know in order to be successful during the this detox program. Week number two, we're going to talk about, we're going to see how everyone has been doing. We're going to tweak the program if needed. Um, we're going to focus in cleansing your digestive tract and the liver. We're going to talk about food combining in relationship to detoxification and to weight loss. We're going to talk about food sensitivities in connection to inflammation and to weight loss. 
We're going to talk about what colonics are and whether that's something that you should be considering doing. Um, week number three is a really important week. By this time, hopefully, we've gone through the healing crisis, we're starting to feel better. And at this point, we're going to challenge ourselves. And we're going to, you know, we're going to think about perhaps doing a bit of a juice fast. So for some of you, it may just be like a part of the day, like an intermittent fast. For other people, it can be up to like a three-day juice fast. So again, we're going to talk about the benefits of this, but this is really going to enhance the benefits that you're going to be getting for the detox. We're also going to be doing a, uh, a talk about a gallbladder flush and, you know, and talking to you about whether this is the right option for you or not. And of course, at this point, we're going to be talking more about the kidneys, the lymphatics, and the lungs. The last week that we're going to be together, we're going to focus on talking about how to introduce some of the foods back so that we can get back to a day-to-day -day eating style. Uh, talk about daily routines that I would like you to continue um, to follow so that you can maintain the improvements that you've achieved thus far. We're going to talk about cooking tips, the do's and don'ts how to deal with emotional eating. This is really important part, you know, of the program, because as we move forward, I find that this is probably one of the main limiting factors for people to stick with their programs is the emotional eating. So we're going to be addressing that. And we're also gonna be talking about how to deal with eating on the go and what to do during birthdays and during holidays as we move forward. So if you were going to try to do this one-on-one -on -one with a naturopathic doctor or with myself at the clinic, the regular cost would be 600, but for this four week online course, because we're gonna be doing it together as a group, it's, uh, I'm offering it for 295 and there's the link um, that you can uh, go to in order to register. So here are the bonuses and the surprise that I have for you. For those of you who sign up, you're, I'm also going to be sharing with you a detox questionnaire, and this is really invaluable because you're going to be filling this out before at the beginning of the detox program, and you're going to be filling it out also at the end. A lot of the changes that we experience during a program like this, they can be quite subtle. It's not unusual for patients to come back to my clinic and say, oh, yeah, I feel the same. And I'm like, okay, you know, and then I start going through all the symptoms. Well, how is those headaches? Or how's that stiffness in the morning? And how are those aches and pains? How's that rash that you have in your leg? And then all of a sudden people start realizing, oh yeah, I haven't been feeling as headachey. Oh yeah, yeah, you know what? My energy has gone up to like an eight out of 10. It's not the four out of 10 that I was feeling before. But yeah, and I'm not feeling as bloated as before. So it's just amazing how, you know, we. Sometimes we're just so busy that we don't really realize how things are changing in our body. So doing the detox questionnaire is a great way to monitor that. Um, also going to be including, and I put a lot of work into this, it's an e-booklet with tons of recipes um, that you can follow during your detoxification program. And also, um, I'm going to make available a video. Uh, on how to prepare for your detox. So it's an 18 minute video that is really gonna help you to get ready so you can get the most out of this program. So again, the summary of what the detox course package includes is you're gonna get the detox questionnaires, the detox recipe e-booklet, how to prepare for my detox video. It starts next Wednesday, um, January the 10th, and it goes until January the 31st. It's going to be at 11 o'clock in the morning. But if you can't make it to the live session, it's not a problem. I will be making the recordings available. Um, so you can listen to it, you know, at a time that is better for you. The cost is $2.95 and there is the link. Now, one last thing that I'd like to offer you. For those of you who sign up today, and unfortunately I can't offer this to too, too many people, so I'm only gonna be offering this for those of you who sign up today. Uh, you're gonna have a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one telephonic session with me. And um, the reason why I wanna offer this is because I really wanna understand what you're dealing with. And I, so that I can better guide you uh, on what you need to do and what you need to get out of this detox program. So it will give me an opportunity to get to know your main health concerns, what your current medication is, what supplements you're taking or should be taking, 
Um, so again, I can only offer this to the people who sign up.